Honestly, guys, I think I have a bit of a problem. Send help. Hey, fellow garden gnomes, this is Brittany. Welcome back to my channel where I take you guys along with me on my journey to self sustainability. Today, that journey has taken us into my little grow room here. If you'd like to know how I made this lovely seed starting shelf for under $200, check out the video that I'll link up in the cards above. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about my problem. My seed hoarding problem. So I'm going to turn you guys around and first I'm going to start by showing you the seeds that I already have. This might be a bit of a long video. Got my beets, my Shiraz Tall Tops, which will give me a lot of beet greens. And then I've got some dill, cilantro. Now dill and cilantro, once I plant those in my garden, I probably won't have to worry about them in future years because they tend to self-sow. We've got some cool purple radishes. And this was a free gift that I'd gotten with uh, co Cosmic Purple Carrots. I've got some Swiss chard, some mescaline mix, red lettuce mix, some parsnips. Now I'm not sure how well these are going to do because normally parsnips, their seeds only last for a year and I got them last year. Uh, these are Azvarsky peppers. Um, I started them way too late last year, and so didn't really get to try any. Uh, and then similar with the eggplant, although I started them late and they, they got really shaded out in my community garden plot because I just uh, ended up planting too much. Um, and then some black Hungarian peppers. Again, similar to the other pepper, I started them too late last year. And then these are some tomatoes from my gardener, the opalka tomato, and the orange oxart tomato. Again, similarly to the peppers, I stirred them too late and so didn't really get to try any. These are parsley. I'm definitely looking forward to growing more parsley this year because I love uh, tabbouleh. Another free seed packet. The black vernissage tomato, I didn't try them last year because I had so little room, but I'm definitely looking forward to trying those. Uh, and then sweetie tomatoes, again, I didn't get a chance to try them last year. Lemon basil, oh my goodness, they smells amazing. Golden Jenny melons, uh, unfortunately the seedlings didn't survive last year, so hopefully I'll have better luck this year. The borage, these went insane. The bees just loved these flowers. They loved them. Like it, it was to the point where we wanted to cut them back sometimes, but we were afraid to approach it because there were so many bees buzzing around. We've got some zinnias, always very pretty. And I love to um, interplant uh, different herbs and flowers in between my vegetable plants to attract pollinators. We've got some marigolds, scarlet kale. Last year my kale was hit rather hard by, um, I, believe it, I believe they're called cabbage worm. Uh, they're the white moths that flutter around and then leave eggs on your brassicas and they hatch into these little green caterpillars. Um, I think this year I'm going to try and put all my brassicas in an area where I can put some netting over them. Some mammoth melting snow peas, um, but I also, I saved some seed from the peas that I grew last year. So um, I'm first going to plant those and then if I have any more room, I'll plant these. Got this uh, kohlrabi blower speck. Again, uh, similar to the kale, I'm going to put these all together into a little spot where I can cover with some netting. And I've got these dragon egg cucumbers, which are really neat. They're definitely a very interesting cucumber. And as a person who lives alone, I kind of like them because they're a perfect single serving cucumber. I've got my straight neck squash, which did fairly well. And then lastly, I have these purple beans. So those are all the seeds I have from last year. Now on to the seeds that I've bought. So 
So these are all the packets of seeds I've uh, ordered this year. Funny story, I actually ordered these two packets before I ordered these two and I may have forgotten what I had ordered in here. So there are a couple uh, overlapping seeds. Um, I'm, I'm a little embarrassed about it. Here I have buckler leaf sorrel. Now all these seeds come from Astrolane Edibles, which is a company headed by someone I knew back in Ottawa who was very much entrenched in the local gardening scene. She did a lot of workshops that I went to and I kind of credit her with providing like the basis of my knowledge for, for gardening and producing food. I remember when I was at her place, she was doing a tour as part of the workshop that she was running at the time. And we got to try some of the plants that she had growing. And I tried this one and was really impressed with how lemony it tasted. The other one is another type of sorrel, it's called mountain sorrel. And it is also a lemony tasting plant. And then this is goji berry. So that's a type of fruit. And then lastly, um, I ordered some anise hyssop and then I got another packet for as a gift. So I'm definitely going to have lots of anise hyssop for the next couple of years. Anise hyssop is a very good plant for attracting pollinators. Next up, I have a bunch of packets from a uh, place in Nova Scotia called Annapolis Seed. This is an earth lentil, so it's a type of lentil that has a kind of neat blue-green kind of look, so that's really interesting. I've got a type of squash called the Nutter Butter Squash, which is, uh, I, th I believe it's supposed to be a butternut squash type, but it's also supposed to be a little early, which is good for my area because I have a short growing season. So some black eyed Susans, some evening primrose. It is a biennial and it's edible, which is really cool. Facelia, supposed to be really good for attracting pollinators. Wild foxglove, sea buckthorn. So this is going to be kind of neat. So sea buckthorn are uh, berries and they're actually berries that are really good um, sources of vitamin C, so it'll be really interesting to start them from seed. Uh, wild yarrow, swamp milkweed, which is a milkweed that's not as invasive as some other milkweed, um, but also still very good for attracting pollinators, so that will be perfect. Wild lupins, and then I've got three bonus packs, uh, one called elecampane, Valerian and Hardee's and I believe aside from the vegetables in a couple of these they're mostly perennials which are nice I love I love being able to just plant them and have them come back year after year with very little effort next I'll show you the uh, order that I got from MI Gardener so since I have so many I'm going to go through these really quickly sugar baby watermelon okra Another sweet pepper, because I only had that one uh, sweet pepper type. A Big Mac pumpkin. Now that I have the space, I really want to grow some big pumpkins for Halloween. Uh, soybean, that is good for edamame. Red noodle bean, just because they look cool. Golden zucchini. I really like golden zucchini. I find them a little more tender than the green zucchini. Hamburg rooted parsley. So. I've heard some people say they use the parsley, some people say they don't, they just use it for the roots. Sweet marjoram, stevia, largely sorrel because clearly I don't have enough sorrel, and arugula because peppery greens. Now we have a garbanzo bean because I love my chickpeas, chamomile, sage, chives, hyssop. This is one of those things that I got because I forgot I had ordered the nice hyssop. Oregano, chervil, lots of herbs, mammoth red rock cabbage, purple coneflower, muncher cucumber, because I only had the um, dragon egg cucumber and I wanted um, a more kind of normal cucumber, lavender, and another butternut squash because I forgot I had ordered the nutter butter squash. 
Rhubarb, Victoria rhubarb. Bachelor's buttons. I believe these are edible flowers actually. self planting cute cauliflower. Holy basil because I like basil. Mammoth basil because I like basil. And a sunray tomato because I like orange tomatoes. I'm finding that as I get a little bit older, I'm getting some heartburn with more acidic foods. So orange and yellow tomatoes is kind of the direction I think I'm going. So I'm just going to move that over there. And here we go with the seeds from West Coast Seeds. So butter oak lettuce. I just thought they looked really pretty. Leeks. I love leeks. Parsnip because I forgot that I still had parsnip, but in case the other parsnip um, doesn't do very well, at least I have some backup. Some shelling peas. Quinoa. I'm going to try and grow the quinoa in my um, plot, in my community garden plot, I think. Radish because I do have the purple radish, but I thought it'd be nice just to have some kind of more normal looking radish as well. Stacon radish. This is a rose. The label's covering the nice picture, but they're basically these small roses, which I think are super cute. Centoria, um, a type of cornflower, which are edible. Corn, gold bantam, which are supposed to only reach about five feet in height. I think I'm also going to put this in the uh, community garden plot along with the quinoa because I'm thinking that both the quinoa and the corn will only be harvested at a certain time so it means that I don't have to constantly go the plot as much. Calendula sunflower seeds. I'm so happy because I finally have space for sunflowers. Strawberries. I'm going to try starting strawberries from seed. Bergamot, another great flower for attracting bees and pollinators. Rosemary and fennel. I love fennel. Like it's, I'll chop it up with some onion and, and saute it and then serve it with fish. It's really good. So drying beans, borlotti. So I'm hoping that between these, the uh, chickpeas and the lentils, I'll be able to um, save a lot of uh, dried food for the winter. Kale. I specifically got a kale that was uh, sort of flat leaved. It doesn't have those all those crinkles. Although I do have the scarlet kale that has the crinkles, but I just find it frustrating sometimes to have to uh, wash those because the dirt gets in every little wrinkle. Gold beets. Nautic Brussels sprouts. Broccoli. And lastly, radicchio. So there you have it. I'm not totally sure I'm going to get all those seeds planted this year because those were a lot, but gosh darn, I'm going to give it my best shot. The one thing I know for sure is by the time May comes along, which I'm thinking that the end of May, maybe the start of June, is going to be the time when I can put my plants in the ground. But by the time that time comes along, I'm going to have seed trays on every available horizontal service in my house. That's just how it's going to be. I've accepted that. If you want to follow me and my seed starting shenanigans, I highly encourage you to check out my Instagram. It's Brittany underscore Dane, but I will also put that in the description below. And that's where I'll put, be putting a lot of photos and updates on the state of my seedlings just because I find it difficult to make a full video on just the state of my seedlings, at least as long as I only have a few. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're interested in seeing more, please hit that subscribe button and uh, let me know what you'll be planting this year. Until the next video, stay wildly green.